what do you say to some of those critics about what your lab tests have shown you about being able to cure, treat, provide an immune response here to COVID-19? So uh, thank you for having me here. Firstly, the COVID-19, since the COVID-19 started, it, the whole thing is, is all about antibodies. If you can take a look at the uh, uh, people who wanted to get the antibody for detecting the antibody, whether you determine whether you have a viral infection or not viral infection. And people, there's a lot of company doing, a lot of academic groups doing vaccine. It's all about antibody too. Whether we can generate antibody from the body that uh, been neutralizing and preventing viral infection. In this case, you want 100% prevention of viral infection with the vaccine. Now, for therapeutics, when you have a virus already infected, it's all about antibody too. Reason for that is you want antibody binds to the uh, virus and you want to get rid of them and uh, preventing them enter into healthy cells and preventing them from replicating that increase the viral load that will increase the uh, complication down the road right. that's causing the COVID-19. So the whole business about the COVID-19 is all about antibody from detection, vaccination, yeah. and treatment. There's been some confusion about calling it a cure if it hasn't been done and tested on humans. Can you clarify your position on calling it a cure if that was accurate or not? No, actually, uh, we did not call it a cure. We say that we potentially have an agent antibody that potentially if we get through the FDA testing to be safe and effective, then potentially that was, will be a cure. Mm -hmm. This is all pending our testing results in human. However, you're starting with the first step. Your first step, you have to have a neutralizing antibody that prevents completely, I'm emphasize here, completely in the uh, cell culture setting that preventing virus from infecting the healthy cells. Right. In that case, we have it. Now, it's totally different from uh, anti-cancer drug. When you have anti-cancer drugs, which we do quite a few in our company, when you have the, the uh, and cancer in mice and you can eradicate the uh, uh, cancer in mice, but you don't call that potential cure. Reason is that mice, the cancer acts differently in human body than in the mice. We have a lot of uh, uh, compound eradicated cancer. However, we never call that potentially a cure. Here, antiviral, antibacterial is different. When you have an agent, you can demonstrate that prevent the virus from infecting the healthy cells in the cell culture setting in vitro. You can prevent it completely, viral infection. You may have onto something that potentially could be a cure for the disease, preventing them from uh, infecting you, preventing them from uh, continue uh, uh, infecting the healthy cells and increase the viral load. And that's potentially a cure. Do you have an updated timeline on when we could see more studies, a wider range, human trials, when we could really start to see uh, the therapies uh, be distributed to a mass market? Yes. So what we are doing right now, day and night with our company, we have a, you know, a few hundred people working on these things right now about to create the cell lines that manufacture these cells on the CGMP guidance from the FDA and we manufactured product, and then we get into uh, uh, IND, which is initial uh, new drug application. And uh, we hope we can get the whole package, IND package in places to file within the next two to three months. And uh, by the time of July, August window, we will be able to hopefully get the FDA consent, get into the human testing to start with potentially, starting with a patient gets into ICU after the infection, if that moves with a safety demonstrated and potential efficacy demonstrated, we can move uh, forward to potentially uh, get to a prevention, Doc which is giving the healthy people. Yeah, the D dose. doctor, finally here, there's been some skepticism about acquisition offers that have been made for Sorrento Therapeutics. How do you respond to people who've said that some of those acquisition offers may have been to move the share price? Are you in talks with anyone to be acquired? How do you respond? 
So this is a this is absolutely nonsense to move the stock. Reason for that is uh, we have a very big hum, fully human antibody library. We have a um, one FDA approved drug and we have a multiple candidates in the uh, clinical testing, some of them in pivotal study and the, the uh, value is tremendous. And uh, some of the folks seeing the value, they may have interest to acquire us, but it's unsolicited from us, which uh, nothing we can do, but we reject them all. Reason for that, that we believe the value is tremendously yep. undervalued right now. Well, 